set everything up, and then mm -hmm. I send all the men off on a crazy adventure, and I stay at home. She's a puppet but master. <laughs> so you, you produced? I produced, yeah. You produced. Yeah. Okay. We did have um, location producers uh -huh. in China, mm -hmm. and uh, they were really great, but I found them and worked with them. But I think she's really underselling it because it's when she says she her she, her mo is to you know kind of what did you say Pup you didn't say puppeteer you said put it all together put and then all send together, the yeah. men off she, on master, a crazy really is a puppet she's really a puppet master of the whole situation well the best producers yeah. are the people that are the project manager of the film right and they are essentially moving all the parts around and making sure they all fit right and they yeah. do all the do the things they're supposed to do and you know and uh, it's a it's an enormous task if you don't have a few of them to each split it up yeah yeah I mean, in this case, she produced sight unseen, mm -hmm. venues, events, uh, all you know, scenes, cast, mm -hmm. right. you know, in China in a on a film that was not permitted. Um, but I think the way that we've worked together in the past is that I can kind of go out and get a bunch of raw materials in terms of people and costumes mm -hmm. and stuff places right. and things like that and just kind of shove them all at you and then you can yeah. make magic with yeah. them so let's talk about the film a little bit more specific so when we refer when i refer to or you guys refer to certain things about it you know we mentioned china it takes mm -hmm. place in china almost entirely and then the costuming really does play a big part in the, you know people's wardrobe so for instance uh okay so david zellner but Who's David, I have to say, David Zellner did his own costuming. Yeah, he did. I don't have to give credit to him. No, it's <laughs> I mean, I, no, no, he really to. did. He found that hat. Yeah. Uh, what were the other elements? Well, I mean, we did it a lot like, you the know. The cowboy hat? We did the it. The cowboy hat, the you know, iconic cowboy hat. We decided on what the costumes were going to be, and then, you know, we basically said, Dave, I said, what would you be most comfortable in you okay. know you just go get it you know i see i thought maybe there was a real I, like i have to you know admit that i'm not entirely familiar with what this the western the, the idea of what an american iconic images are in china right now mm -hmm. especially in a new city like where you where you shot this right Shen, how do you pronounce it shenzhen shenzhen, shenzhen. shenzhen. and so uh he he's he's going as an entre, an entrepreneur right a, mm -hmm. a tech Entrepreneur? Tech Huckster. Tech Huckster. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> even better. <laughs> and he, you know, relying on others that are, 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 are there, like old Bob Longstreet's uh, character, right? right. Longstreet, kind of is, uh, who's an old friend of the podcast, he's a, he's a uh, bit of, he's a Huckster too, but he's also a, like kind of a fixer, right? He connects people. Yeah, he's a, he's a, you know, kind of an expat sourcing guy. Right, yeah. So, so anyway, yeah. they, but they, they dress up in such a way that they, they are trying to re represent what, what, what the Chinese, what they think the Chinese want to right. see in, in, with Americans, right? Like Hollywood looking, right. you know, Ryan Seacrest types. <laughs> right. In a way, right? I mean, and they're trying of, to hysterical. look younger than they younger, are, right. Because that is, you yeah. know, they they can't look old. Oh, right. It's an under thirty generation is referenced here too. Tell me more, or the audience, I could feign a knowing about it because I'm going to be the uh, the devil's advocate for the listeners. What all this means, in a way, youth is very important right now. Like you have to be young and uh, very very wealthy and uh, right and yeah, successful. Absolutely. S they're they're chasing an ideal of being young and hip and beautiful and really they're sort of on the later side of middle age and, and they end up looking like uh, david and, and like uh, senior frogs managers in yeah. pensacola florida yeah, yeah. it's really <laughs> <laughs> i mean that was really yeah. the inspiration for so, so those looks were, yeah so, but the first look looks pretty cool. David comes in and he dons the cowboy hat, as we mentioned, and uh, in a kind of a, a fit, fairly fitted suit. I mean, he looks pretty good. You know, I can understand why that's an appealing image for for him. Man. For him, to, <laughs> that's true. How did this this story, which we barely tapped into yet, we're talking more about the characters. Where did this story come from, and how did you come up with it? What what uh, were it you, was it, more were like there? It, yeah, it was just more like a lot of things that came at me. Uh -huh. um, that For you just end up getting caught up sure. in, and it was and it just kept, more of an ordeal. Yeah, and it know, was obviously than a, than a traditional. I hate when directors talk about their vision. Uh -huh. I don't think anyone should make films based on that. I think 
best films uh, are things that are difficult mm -hmm. um, about topics you don't you wish you didn't have to look at especially not for years at a time um, and I think uh, you know I think this is definitely one of those things I mean it definitely I uh, I had had some a lot of things that I on my phone that were sort of observations and little notes mm -hmm. um, and then um, I had other experiences for example sort of randomly ended up shooting commercials for uh, for tech products like mm -hmm. you know Fitbit and Nest and this sort of thing and kind of saw wasn't really interested in making anything about that world but I saw this really rich sort of crime underworld uh, that had ties to China, mm. international, global, globalism stuff. Right. But uh, I just felt I felt Is like it it investment had a, money. That would these yeah, there's just all there's all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. um, but I just I, I saw it as a kind of a rich, you know, tableau to to, to tap into a very dense world yeah. underneath. Uh, yeah. Underneath this, uh, this sort of inert stuff, you know, that we all buy and right. use every day. Yeah, there's uh, a, it, it, right. What 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 goes on in these factories? We know that that often there are uh, often Chinese or Indian uh, uh, exploitation uh, exploited workers going. Right. But but what else aren't we talking? About? That's an image we're familiar with. Mm -hmm. There are all sorts of other relationships and and things going on that we're, sure. we're, we're less familiar with, perhaps. Um, you also mentioned you, uh, before you guys live in, in San Francisco, that too, I could imagine, being uh, one of the major hubs in that area of the country oh, yeah, for tech, uh, and that would influence you and inspire you. Yeah, it's all, it's all tech. Yeah, right. it's all yeah. tech. And it's just, you know, there, there's, a, there's a, a haplotype of man in San Francisco that <laughs> sort of uh, been... Created in the image of sort of Steve Jobs and Elon Musk, yeah. but is being sold back to sort of lower level demons <laughs> who, who uh, you know, just want to ride jet skis and, you know, kind of live for free and have people in the third world answer their phone, make their HGH products, <laughs> make their, uh -huh. you know, uh, whatever their, their new startup, you know, uh, might be, um, and you know, sort of the Tim Ferriss four-hour work week mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's being sold sold as a sort of a legitimate thing, you know, to be this this, as this a, new globalist or this this new rich person, and I feel like that's sort of a it's a and it and it, and it it's these are people that have liberal politics and that are mm -hmm. on the surface benign, but are really craven capitalists, and so. And I, there's a lot of comedy there. There's a lot of, uh, you know, just disgusting uh, individuals there. So yeah, what is the what is the relationship <laughs> in your? I'm sorry, I don't mean to exclude you, Molly, from the conversation <laughs> at all. Okay. So ho, please, any t anything on your mind? Just jump on it. Please jump do. On me. Please yeah, do. Hey, stop but me in my tracks. do you see like this 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 new uh, economy? I, I hate that expression, but it's it, the the economy that we're 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 observing in your film, which it, again is called uh, Ghost Box. Cowboy, uh, Ghost Box being kind of the what, what was it called again? What did uh, Alfred Hitchcock call it? The representative Ghost Box. It's it's, it's sort of like an object which you it's his, I, actually you created the ideal version, and I'm going to have to look it up so I don't sound like a complete up moron. But that that it you've created the per perfect uh, example of what I'm talking about, which is like an object which is almost beside the point. It, you're, right. It's leading exactly, you to think yeah. that this thing is going to play some sort of role. And right. it's really not what the film is about at all. Exactly, it's not what the yeah. hero is right. after. And, you know, he's trying to achieve what most heroes in films are, which is a better sense of, of who they are. Right. You know, exactly. in, this, in this world that's very chaotic and, and scary. Again, that's played by David uh, <laughs> Zellner, who I never th <laughs> thought of, but he's he actually has a real sort of quality, uh, you know, like a... I, I don't oh, yeah, he's movie great star in quality. It. Yeah, he's, oh, God, yeah. He's really, he's great on screen. I've known him only in the context of, uh, as a, you know, co-director. Co 
and as a brother right, of as another a co-director. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Sure. Well, one of um, uh, <clears throat> a friend of mine, Beth Lizick, who's an author, described him as a person who could never, who would never stop. And as a character, it was she found it extremely compelling because mm. he would never. <laughs> He was so, uh, in the film, so sort of unaware of, of any possibility of stopping, going back, weighing his options, thinking about what he was doing. He was just a single track mind on a, on a track towards this nebulous goal. Are you talking about David or are you talking about his character? David. Well, no, no, no. His character. His character. His character. David and his character. Yeah. Jimmy Van Horn. Jimmy Van Horn. Yes. Yeah. No, the character I mean, that he plays is like When that. I asked David, because I knew I needed a, uh, I knew I needed someone that was going to go deep and that could handle uh, working in a, on a really reduced crew, mm-hmm. uh, changing plans and that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. so... And I also kind of wanted a, a filmmaker to play the lead. Okay, well, why? Well, because because um, I felt like the whole movie has a has a filmmaking metaphor in the, at the at the center of it. Mm-hmm. It's sort of you you throw everything into making this awkward product that nobody particularly wants, mm-hmm. um, but that someone eventually takes from you and sells the crap out of right. and it has yeah. nothing ultimately has nothing to do with you you're just the the you know, this, this conduit yeah. for this thing so I, I felt like I needed somebody who understood that on a pretty visceral level uh, yeah yeah it's a great metaphor uh, is that the right word metaphor because yeah. it's like you're Some exactly kind of uh, how, you yeah. know you make this movie you put yourself into it and then you sell it right Right. And it's taken out, and they'll do whatever they're going to do with it. Yeah, and you know they can. You, I guess some some distribution companies, maybe you, you even have experience here, are going to be more invested in you as a as an artist and as somebody who is a, essential to that jur- that you know journey yeah. or that direction for the film. But yeah. most are, you know, they they they've got a department they've hired for that. They don't need right. your input for it. Either. But also, I've, I I just always thought Dave would make a great. Um, uh-huh. Con man, interesting in a film, you know. Um, what gave you that idea? I'm not exactly sure. I just felt like his he he's he's been in stuff uh, where he's plays kind of like vulnerable or yeah. otherwise like kind of hapless mm-hmm. characters. Yeah. Um, but I felt like that's exactly why, uh, as a con man, you know, it could be interesting to have right. sort of some of that vulnerability. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And, you know, but, um, but yeah, when I asked him, uh, I said, you know, like, do you, do you want to be a fake businessman in China? And, and he gets knocked off and he performs at wedding ceremony. He's just like, hell yeah, I want to be a fake businessman in China. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I think a lot of the people that got involved with the film, you know, they were interested in it as an adventure. Because, you know, yeah. in modern life, there's so few adventures to be had. And if you look at it like that, like you're, you know, hundreds of years ago, you could go away, you could take to the ocean, you could go on a journey, you may or may not come back. You know, there's sort of like a macho adventuring quality that you can't really capture anymore. Mm-hmm. And so this film and Big River Man also mm-hmm. was a situation where it was an opportunity to just go somewhere very remote, do things that were, you know, a bit dangerous, and, you know, just have a crazy experience. So in other words, they're both midlife crisis films. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, as the world does become smaller, that is true, what you're saying. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. you know you're, there's almost two sides of, of what this, well, I was going to say coin, but I don't want to say that word, because you have Bitcoin, well, at least blockchain or this concept is is becoming more and more of a thing, mm-hmm. and then you have this false economy or something, economy also built on all this this false stuff, you know, mm-hmm. that that the film explores. And I'm, you know, I'm wondering if there's a relationship there too. Like, or if you see, because uh, I think uh, Jimmy, uh, the main character again, he. He's he's comes with a bit of a, a fortune, right? I mean, he's got some yeah, money. he's got he's got some yeah, Bitcoin. he's got like a small inheritance. Oh, okay, that's converted into Bitcoin. 
it's forty thousand dollars. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. But I always imagine that money I is maybe not. a second mortgage on his home. Right. right. I mean, he's not a wealthy man. No, no. I don't feel. And he's yeah. playing things so close to the right edge. And he's going the all with, in. Yeah. You really yeah. exactly. Yeah. Texas hold them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's gone all in, and you know the promise is that this is the seed money for you know right. all this other stuff that you're going to get, and it's based on all the, the you know the the this money for nothing uh ideal mm-hmm. or you know whatever they're selling he's um, so he, he shows up in shenzhen with a uh, forty thousand bucks worth of bitcoin <laughs> and this invention his, that he hands his off to box, bob yeah that he hands off to his his uh connection his uh, man in uh shenzhen bob longstreet 68 year old bob longstreet he's supposed to be 60 he's supposed to be old. 60 how in the did film. you agree to how did you get bob uh, what am I saying? Robert. I can't call him Bob. Uh, you call him Bob. Uh, on, uh, how did you get him to agree to play a 60 year old? <laughs> With a lot of help. It took a lot of help. It, a lot of help to get, get him to agree or a lot of help to uh, make him look Just like... to get him on the plane. Oh, really? It took a lot of people to... <laughs> Scrape yeah. him off the sidewalk. Yeah. It's like that thing in Apocalypse Now with the kids like doesn't want to get out of the helicopter. Uh-huh. It's kind of like that with Bob. He seems game. I mean, he seems uh, very selective over the parts he's taking. That's for sure. In the oh, last yeah. few years, yeah. So he's not going to just take anything. Yeah. Um, how did we get Bob to do this? I mean, Bob and I had been friends for a, a yeah. while, uh-huh. and so um, he knew. You this know. back to the Septian days again. Or yeah, and that? we we had had a different a, a person who was not a non actor uh-huh. playing Bob uh-huh. initially, and uh, that person. Um, disappeared into a ketamine K hole. Oh dear! Yeah, like weeks before the the shoot, and um, couldn't get him out of it. Didn't know, what, and he was the legit product guy. Like lots of uh, mm-hmm. like one of his products was uh, the Cockstar. It was like a, it was like a. a I'm sure I've used it. I just don't know. What was the Cockstar again, Molly? It was a, it was a remote sex product. Uh huh. That's all you need to know about the cock. So anyway, so this guy went into a, you know, he went to get me K-hole. And it was, it was maybe three weeks before we, we went. And so I said, well, my guy, we need, we need like an actor now. Yeah, you know? right, right, right. You can't who who can to. do this? Yeah, right. And, and you know, Pull it off. Yeah. And, uh, well, that person who shall remain nameless uh, like, was shoot, also so. interested in actually create, making products in Shenzhen. Right. He, was he wanted to make an LED movies. scarf. So he had an LED scarf product that he thought was going to be really good with like sports, perfect sports right. teams, right. and so you can light it up like for whatever color your sports team was, blue oh. or red. I or, thought it was going to maybe there would be a ticker on it. Well, and then and then <laughs> all the understand. maybe all the scarves together could talk to each other and make a larger picture. Yeah, it was like a scarf ecosystem. So I think he imagine. actually wanted to go act in the film only so he could get over there and into right. these per- factories per- and pitch and his he, own product. Yeah, perfect. And that was exactly like it's very meta. It, yeah, it, it was extremely we were, meta. Yeah, way too much, maybe. Yeah, and so so that fell through, and so we uh, we had to get an actor, and Bob was the absolutely the the only person that could have done it was the know? original non-actor fellow in his sixties. Was he older? No, he was. Uh, he was okay. late forties. I'd okay. say. Yeah. yeah. So even younger than our friend. Yeah. But well, I the joke Bob is that he's 68, but he right. looks 40. Right, because right. <laughs> of the, 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 uh, the, the, the wig. And, and the Hong Kong I'm hit. I'm 68 and the, years uh, old. And the dentures and the... There's a, there's a s- talk like this, because <laughs> yeah. the uh, dentures go in there. Yeah. 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 It's uh, Free dentures. But it does sound like a very this, wacky the, film. Have you seen... Did that... Were you inspired by those late night denture commercials where they say, I just like, I, this has been the greatest thing ever. And they really don't, or you must know what you look like because they look ridiculous. I mean, they really look, it's so obvious. And they're trying to say it just, no, nobody. Even well, we knows. got them off Amazon. Nobody. They only cost like $14. Really? You, were, you paid it too much. It started as a way to, to, for me to make Bob look more like the original character who had veneers. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah for sure. And That's so, cool. and Bob, great. Bob had really, you know, yeah, normal teeth and I just wanted him to have those and so that no, kind of evolved into the free dentures idea yeah yeah but it does sound like you know it, the movie really does strike a dark tone also yeah I want to yeah 
you know. It's not right. All right. We're sort of suggesting there's a lot of laughs here, and there are some, but they're dark. There's a there's lot of you, plenty you, of laughs. What are you talking about? There's a lot of laughs in the film, but it also it's a broad comedy. Is there's a level of quite also, of dark. Um, yeah, he's a desperate character. Uh, For sure, Jimmy, and you know he when things go bust uh, about I'd say two thirds of the way through or halfway to two thirds of the way through the film with ghost the ghost box. Uh, he starts to have to try to figure out how he's going to keep himself going there, and, and so he starts taking, you know, a variety of of jobs, and and everybody that he comes into contact seems pretty desperate too. These people that employ him for these p- different jobs. Well, they, that really is his downfall because because he's he's all into this Tim Ferriss four hour work week. He's going to be an entrepreneur. Jimmy. He's going to right. get rich. He's going to cash out. Mm-hmm. Really, his ultimate horror is actually having to actually work. Working. Yeah. yeah. So it is the, a sad thing. At the did end. You, either of you guys ever read the books of Graham Greene? No. You should read them, or a couple anyway. I don't mean he was very, very uh, prolific. But he, he was exploring some of these themes 100 years ago, or mm-hmm. maybe not 100, but 80. You know, he was in writing in the 30s the and 40s and 50s all over but in uh, in asia in, in he you know he in uh, cuba in uh, africa haiti i the mean inner lives books. of businessmen yeah yes and they like our the burnt out a burnt out case our man in havana all these characters that are out of what do you, how would you say it john uh, they're they're not in their element they're they put themselves out to try to work the system you know to come out on top and yet they're all desperate they're all yeah. desperate and burnt out you know, yeah. like emotionally burnt out. You see it a little less with David. You're, you see more of that haplessness than you do the, the typical Graham Greene character. But as we were talking about this, I was starting to think, you know, there wasn't Bitcoin back in the day. It's a very different world, but humanity is the same, you know. Uh, well, there's a term that I like called uh, that John was using the other day, vulture capitalism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so when I think about these guys, I think about that for them because you know there's the Elon Musks of this world and yeah. Steve Jobs of these of yeah. this world that are actually making you know real money and then there's people that are sort of around the edges just trying to get scraps right and that's kind of how I imagine well that's everybody guys. else yes it's meaning through profit and 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 I I also think these this is the one of the ideal stories of in the Trump age you know I mean sadly now, we're here right now talking in, uh, I don't know what the neighborhood we call this anymore, but we're near Tribeca. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're mm-hmm. downtown. You're about to have your, or you already had your U.S. premiere. I'm not even sure. Had the premiere. Had yeah. it. Mm-hmm. How'd that go? It was that great. Was, where oh, was man. that? Was that two nights ago? Like that. Uh, yeah, it was uh, basically the whole weekend. I mean, yeah. it started fri- uh, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. Yeah, it's, I guess so, all the yeah. group of screenings yeah. is the premiere. That is that wonderful. your world premiere, or is that just the... Uh, that was a world premiere, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How'd that go? That was great. Great. Couldn't have been better. People yeah. laughed. People cried. Yeah. <laughs> it became a part of them. <laughs> <laughs> they um, did. A uh, lot of people were very affected by the film. Like, yeah? They were like, I can't get it out of my head. Yeah. And I was like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Who was here from the film? All of our producers. Um, Everyone except Bob. Where's Bob? But I don't know where Bob. He's where is shooting Bob? some Netflix show. Oh, that's right. He's, oh. he's, he's in Atlanta. He could have flown in oh, for in the Atlanta. night. Yeah, he could have. He hates he film festivals. Did he does. Not. Oh yeah. But David Zellner was here. John, George Rush, John Montague, mm-hmm. Sean Glenn, all the producers. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a few actors here. Mm-hmm. Sadly, Vincent couldn't be here. Specialist, of course, couldn't be here. But yeah, so a few people mm-hmm. who were in the film. Is there, is there another? <laughs> no, no, screening? I was wondering if there was we something. Oh, it's we screening must have again. A no, no, no. It's, it's not, screening uh, again no, on see, Wednesday. To, all right, well, that's a little soon for me to turn this. I was going to actually post this on Thursday. Oh, I, I don't think this would. I, what I will do is, 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 is help promote it through all, all means possible, that last screening, which I guess you guys Great. would be Yeah, in. that last screening would be... Is still tickets? Come out to the last it's screening, sold out. even if it was in the past. As you're listening to I'm this, glad to hear it. but if it's not in the <laughs> right. past, come to our screening. Come to the screening <laughs> Wednesday night. Wednesday night, you can stand in line for tickets, but it's right, sold tickets. out. I think um, at this point, right? And so, what? What? I guess is there? I'll be there, so I'll have some extra passes mm-hmm. from the crew oh, that are not right. here anymore, so I can just hand out our passes. Don't we have passes? 
What are you worried about? This is like this is my. But it's still it's still in the past days. though when you're listening. So but if, a, if but, you, but I assume if, that by the time you get this and you need passes for the rest of the festival, just uh, call me. Okay. Or <laughs> just email call John. Me. Yeah. Email John. Email rather. Me. That's yeah. I'm not going to give the phone number or your email, but I'll okay. just. Do you have an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial <laughs> spirit? Spirit. You'll, I'm you'll sure that you can find yeah. out how to get into that screening. Yeah, yeah if you're past. a vulture capitalist. No, it's right. Right. Yeah. Just a self promoter. Uh. <laughs> Martin Strell, um, what, what was the final? What happened to him? Because uh, I've seen, I saw, obviously, I saw. You thought of, as soon as I said self promoter, you thought of Martin. No, I didn't. No. I was thinking of this question before. Although, no, no, no. He well, as 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 charismatic as he was, I never thought about that that, that way. As a as charismatic, promoter? I didn't think of him as. Well, not really. Hmm. No, I just thought he was trying to accomplish this in, this enormous challenge i don't Hmm. know uh you do the film is trying to accomplish an enormous challenge yeah 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 how do you make a film about a guy who floats down a river right yeah that's true (laughs) but i don't know it's 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 just it's it's, it was very cinematic because it's been a while since i've seen it martin's at least six uh, years gosh martin what is martin's been doing a lot well he tried to do a around the world swim that so he's didn't he's worked no yeah it didn't work um Around the world. Around the world, yeah. I think that's the next thing. Yeah, around the world. Do you have to do it all in one extended? You know, I mean, there was the girl that sailed around the world by herself, maiden trip. I think it was going to take a couple hundred days and, you know, be in stages. Right. I mean, he didn't swim the Amazon all in one go. He got out at night and drank his... You mean he got out and drank? (laughs) He drank his his wine. Two bottles of wine. Two bottles of wine. And his... Which he told me, you know, it's, it's not very much alcohol in this wine. It is yeah. very Inf- light wine. Yeah. Yeah. But still, two bottles. He's probably hanging out with Trump now. Because he's the, he's not, he used to be the most famous Slovenian. Now he's the second. You know what I mean? Because who's oh. the most he's famous? Gotta, they got to be hanging out over there. Because we know who the most famous uh, Slovenian well, is. Well, he now. lives in L.A. Melania Trump. Melania, of course. Martin went full on. He went full Hollywood, though, didn't he? Because he's in no. L.A. with that. He, he married a lawyer. Oh, he did? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Go figure. Um, but that's, gosh. Yeah. Do you keep it touch? It went I deep. Guess. I have to go to the airport. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for having Thank you. me yeah, on the podcast. Yeah, we're winding down. Sure. And uh, John has many, many more stories You're back, to going tell. back to San Francisco? Or? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Bye. Seriously, you leave now? This is a good yeah. first goodbye story. on the air. Or I gotta go. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry, it's very nice to meet you. I Molly just left the building. It's really okay. nice to meet you. I think you're overdressed. Your scarf. Oh, yeah. I think you may get warm out there. Right. Bye. Nice to meet you. Have Bye. Safe, safe travels. Well, we, yeah, we can wind it down. Hey, Molly, call me. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway. Yeah. So, I, I, so now before, we get down to the yeah, really exactly. What the f- I, so uh, there will not hopefully be another nine years till the, your next uh, project. I hope not. Yeah, because I can't cut out any more. I don't have any more lung to cut out. It, you can only cut uh, out a certain amount and, and then, still yeah, right and function or breathe right, for that. Matter. Right. Yeah. Are you? Are, you said how much? Like about. It's a good you're... scoop. Yeah. A scoop. Is that what yeah. They Is it, you, did your surgeon refer to it as a scoop? Because I would say maybe get a <laughs> no, no, it's, no. In all seriousness, though, I mean that was a big deal. That was a thing that was really crazy. I didn't have uh, health insurance, and I had been sick for a really long time. In fact, I did Big Riverman mostly sick. You and, did, and I didn't know what. I knew that there was something mm-hmm. in my lung, but I didn't know. How did you know? I couldn't get a. I couldn't get a CAT scan. Nobody would scan me. And, uh, because it was just because I didn't have insurance, and it was they like, won't even do it, it without like insurance. All this money, and even if you pay, offered to pay out of pocket, which which I didn't have at the time. Yeah, honestly, I just didn't have it. You know. Yeah. And uh, so it went on for a long time, and the next thing I knew, like I uh, and this was right it was pre Obamacare. Mm-hmm. I mean, like literally months before, uh, my lung just went went to shit, and I ended up in an ER. Oh boy. And they scanned it, and they said, "Oh, you've actually got this tumor occluding your, you know, your your middle and your lower lobe, blah blah blah." And then you've got to go into emergency surgery. We got to cut this thing out because it's it had collapsed, right? Sure. And so, long and short of it is that uh, they they sent me a bill, like a like a like a 
a down payment for oh. a two hundred and fifty thousand dollars surgery, <laughs> and the down payment was sixty five grand. Sure, and yeah. then it became one of the first really. I mean, it was a really. Uh, it turned into a, a campaign. Oh, really? And it was all film community folks. Oh, and so you did? You, oh, you raised man, money yeah. For and they and it was. Uh, did you raise money for that sixty five? They raised all you... of it. They raised all of it. Wait a minute. And so, I got the surgery. Yeah. And so it was this amazing thing where everybody you, came in. Yeah. In two, what, two months or something? Did you, you raise? It took, it took 20, 28 days. One month. So, yeah. You raised? $59,000. Okay. Yeah. That, that's more uh, reasonable. So you were able to make And that then down, one person put it. You had to make rest. the down payment. Yeah, yeah. But what's funny it. is because it was mostly. Uh, it was mostly doc filmmakers that were putting into this thing. Yeah, they are the most generous. I have to yeah. tell you, I did a, a you know a smaller, like half that size, just for the uh, my, all the work I do. I did. I finally did my first ever Kickstarter, mm-hmm. and uh, without any doubt, the most generous people. Oh God, like, yeah, they were incredible. Were in the documentary community. It was um, incredible. It was like this incredible thing, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, it was just kind of sad because they, you know, everybody wanted a, you know, like a. You you want to you want to like the story of like we saved their we saved his life and this sort of thing, but it took it took so long for to recover from the sur- the surgery itself. Yeah, you know, so yeah, sort of ironic. But uh, but yeah, that was what that was what inter interrupted a lot of my yeah a lot of my stuff. So well, it's it's fantastic that you're back and thanks, man. Back on top with a great film, and that you have your world premiere here at, uh, at one of the major festivals. That's, that's, it's, it's wonderful. That's, and I mean, these guys, Tribeca has been incredible. I mean, this, this film could have easily been sidelined, mm-hmm. put yeah. in, a, in an art category. You easily, know? sure. And uh, these guys were just brave and cool. I mean, Kara Kuzmano and, uh, mm-hmm. and Frederick and Tammy Rosen, I mean, these guys really champion this this film and uh, you know something that I had put that much into uh, mm-hmm. it was just amazing to be able to to find a home for it in, mm-hmm. the, in the states you mm-hmm. know so well it's terrific meeting you and uh, yeah thanks a lot Adam <laughs> <laughs> listen to the show because uh, there's a lot of uh, probably friends of yours on I want to listen to this to, uh, I need to get off of the other podcast that I'm listening to I need to listen to more positive <laughs> things. Oh. I'm, do, I'm doing like dark podcasts. Oh, yeah? yeah. I understand. Who's dark? I'm listening to Sword and Scale a lot. Oh, I don't even know them. I you don't know. know that guy? I'll check it out. Yeah. It's, it's just real dark shit. It is? So, yeah. Is I, it, I it, but stop. is it an interview format or is it reviews or is it, what is no, it? No, it's just, it's basically true crime stories. Oh, it's true crime. Yeah, yeah that, that, that uh, that's right. That true crime thing is so. It's a huge thing. It's, it's huge. It's mostly but it's, what the podcast is. It's like kittens on YouTube. Like what in the hell? You know, what I mean? the true crime stuff. Yeah, and I got, I got, I, I got into it. And I got, I got to pull my head out of that. Show. No, I know. I've listened to some, of some of those true crime stories on, and you really get caught up in it. Yeah. You got to see it through. Usually, the ending isn't what you're hoping for, resolution wise, and just you know the sense of finality to it or closure. But you know, it's always kind of a little bit more ambiguous. You know, yeah, the endings of a lot. But of I cases. think it's also just like. Like they don't find out who did they the fill crime. A, it fills a void. I, to be honest, it fills a void yeah. because you recognize on the surface with the school shootings and Donald Trump, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that you're in an darkened world. It, indeed, but the yeah. media doesn't necessarily back that up, and so there's this there's this in the sense rift. of uh, that they're they're not a, a like, fr- affirming that or right. re, you, you know r- that we're in a darkened place, or they're just you get the information, but you don't get. You don't get the story uh, mm-hmm. strung out, or in the, the way context. that you can, or the or the, any of the context, and you yeah, know. and certainly everything else that's you know associated with kind of just getting on with life doesn't look or feel like what mm-hmm. you know is happening. You know, yeah. everything is pastel and bright and normal. Mm-hmm. You know, but really you're you know you're living in this world full of kind of you know devils. You know, yeah, so yeah. I think it's uh, there's something that uh, something that resonates with that stuff. Well, as you can see, it's not just just uh, all like upbeat conversation either. What I do, but it's not serial killers, right? Yeah, you know, or investigating the darker side of human. Right. In a way, it's a, in a way it is an exploration of the more positive side because this is an, uh, the the storytelling and art making is a I think a a, po- a, po- a very positive channel, a, a way of channeling you, you, you know one's. Demons oh. and otherwise, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, John well, Marion. Thank you Quinn, for your service, sir. Uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's really a pleasure to meet you and, and Likewise, finally and get you on the on the podcast. Um, Thanks so much. Yeah, uh, good luck with the film again. It's called it's called Ghost Box Cowboy, coming soon to a theater near you. Thank you. <laughs>